Hello everyone, welcome to the DH Education Podcast, your program to be updated on the digital heritage education domain. I'm your host, Raul Gomez Hernandez, and I'm glad to be here with you. In the ninth episode of the podcast, we will talk with Clara Maria Cordero Balcázar about why gamification is a powerful strategy to engage with young people, how gamification works, storytelling, mechanics, players, roles, etc., how teachers are applying now in blended and distant learning, and how can be applied in digital educational resources with cultural heritage for young people. Stay to the end and discover some innovative projects and book recommendations to explore more around this topic. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the heritage education sector used gamification, game-based learning and serious games for connecting with a diverse audience through digital. Although those three frameworks produce an increase of engagement, motivation and in their contests can be used for a group of people, gamification is the only one that can be applied to any contest and used for achieving goals instead of transferring knowledge or gaining skills as the second or the third one. To implement gamification strategies or models, it's important to take a look at their mechanics or the rules of the games, the roles or the characteristics of the participants, the storytelling or the story of their activity and the resources or the material you're going to use. After this introduction, let me propose some questions to discuss today with our speaker. How gamification can produce social impact? How is it possible to implement a gamification strategy to engage with young people through heritage education resources? This week, I would like to talk with Clara Maria Cordero Balcázar about it. Hello, Clara. Thank you very much for coming to this podcast. Hello, I'm very pleased to be here. Let me introduce yourself a bit to the audience. Clara Maria Cordero Balcázar is a consultant, advisor, and designer of social and communicative participation learning experience. She trains, teaches, coordinates projects, and manages learning communities, gamify your classroom, escape your room, edu, educational spaces, visual thinking in education, and video games in education. She works principally in the field of gamification, visual and visible thinking, digital competence and development of creative learning environments and spaces. She develops her work in different institutions, educational organizations, or with a training approach, many of them focus on e-learning, INSEF, UCM, UFV, UE, LIA. Focus on educational innovation and always developing active processes that can improve the quality and effectiveness of teaching. She also writes at Agora Abierta and she has founded Agora Virtual, an online learning ecosystem. In recent years, gamification, game-based learning, and serious games have become terms very popular in the education domain. Now, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the heritage education sector also has applied these concepts as a way of connecting with a diverse audience through digital. But I think we don't know enough about the opportunities and the real implication it can have for our sector. To better understand the role of gamification in an open education domain, could you briefly explain what gamification stages are about? and how important they are for promoting young people engagement, participation, or motivation. Thanks for giving me a space to talk about gamification and education. First of all, I think there is not that uh, gamification increase during the pandemic, rather than game-based learning strategies, because I think the bigger difference between both are that game-based learning is a short-term strategy, so you can use just in time, uh, in a moment for a concrete con content. And that is what we see in this pandemic uh, period that we need to, to focus and to keep attention of the students in a virtual, um, in, a, in, a, in an hybrid classroom. So we tend to use that kind of game-based learning. Uh, furthermore, gamification is about a long-term strategy where you use game-like elements in an educational context where the learning context is the important part. The difference is that in game-based in game -based learning, you introduce a game in the educational context, but you are playing a game in its context too. So there are two contexts, the, the classroom context and the game context, and this is game-based learning. In gamification, is is like a, a layer you put into the learning path, so you can distinguish uh, the gamification with the learning part. Uh, I think that uh, gamification requires an important planification and a uh, same process. Uh, and that's the challenge for educators in different levels. No? So you need to analyze that context that the students or people who participate 
uh, in, in that kind of experience. And you need to ask a lot, to investigate a lot about them, to have a starting point uh, with their inner interest that motivates to start to your proposal. Uh, in gamification, we use to explain motivational theories that focus in autonomy, competence, and relatedness. So your experience must take into consideration these values uh, as a based content in your experience to motivate, to get immersion, and to engage. And of course, uh, we mix all of that with game elements that I think is the more visible thing of gamification, the mechanics of the, of the, of the games, the rules, the components. The, the most common are points or budgets or some kind of rewards or reinforcement that let the students to get that goals into your experience by themselves. But in this case, we are treating a kind of extrinsic motivation that fit the experience. I think they are very useful, uh, but the goal is to get to that kind of extrinsic triggers uh, based in that values, in, in the autonomy, in the competence, in the social relatedness, so I think uh, the, the, the importance of promotion people engagement is, uh, is based in, in that, in the, in the essence of the experience. So we used to develop a, a kind of a, a the same process uh, that connect with that people uh, to get to that uh, enjoyable or gainful experience where learning is, uh, is done. It's really interesting what to say about gamification and game-based learning are about. I think gamification can be applied to any topic, and game mechanics are very useful for motivating young people. In some cases, teaching an subject in a traditional way can become maybe a bit boring for the students. So using gamification studies could be a way to engage with them. Yes, of course. I think the difference is maybe uh, the context, the people, and the time you spent using that kind of strategy. Uh, Game-based learning is like a training, but it's a training itself. Uh, for the moment, you are playing that game. But gamification, uh, you can see uh, the outcomes uh, of, the, of the effectiveness of gamification in a short term. Uh, in, in a short term, you, you see it, um, maybe not in the same course, maybe not in the same session, uh, but uh, along, along the years because you are working with the competence, the skills of the people who are participating in, in this experience. And you are developing a, a kind of behavior content, a, a kind of habits, a kind of the way you, you learn and, and be conscious of uh, how they learn. Uh, th this is gamification too. So you apply game elements because the game elements are like try triggers in the experience, but you are learning and you don't have to forget that or to miss that the, your goal is always an educational goal. It's not a, a game goal. In the music sector, some institutions have created interactive activities and content like escape rooms and games for kids, teenagers, and other education based on the values of their collections. Some of them got a really positive social impact, getting their local communities involved in their initiatives and motivating them to participate in a collaborative way. Taking this as a good practice in gamification, could you explain more how gamification works and what makes an effective gamified strategy? Well, uh, when we talk about a kind of no formal education, it seems it is easy to develop a gamification strategy because we are not like prisoners of content like at school. Uh, so I think that what we need to know about gamification is that it is involved some kind of human personality uh, and needs, and it's about the behavior we develop to learn. So it's so common to introduce, for example, a narrative as a way to connect that emotional dimension with a cognitive ones uh, and give some purpose to the experience to go for it. So students uh, or the audience uh, need to, to know that, that goal to, to get to it, to visualize that goal. So it's something that uh, video games, for example, do it very well. Uh, in gamification, we talk about gamers or players uh, and the different triggers we need to make actions. So it's a reference uh, to introducing your design process to cover all the possibilities. You, you have to know that your, your audience, your, the people who are participating in this experience, 
could be, uh, for example, um, if we have a leader personality, we need some kind of attention. So perhaps we could get to a kind of a status to be the master, to feel identified. Or if you are a more explorer, you need a non-linear narrative to get some goals by your own without the fixed set and common rules of the experience. So you have to focus on that kind of people uh, to identify which actions, which uh, reinforcements uh, your experience needs to 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 keep the onboarding and go more and go farther. So, uh, like in all games, uh, to feel you get the goal by yourself, and there is where we are promoting autonomy and learning, self-regulation. No, in, in these cases, the teacher becomes a, a kind of a designer of the learning experience and begin with that which point might by a student's interest, but because we investigate about it to develop a student's needs at the end and get that kind of transformation level to support what they learn to other contexts. So I think um, the, the important, uh, the, the focus point here or the focus goal is, is to know better the people who are going to participate in your experience. And, and you can, um, you can draw like a map. I, I use a, a lot this this metaphor of the map to 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 look for different ways to get that goals for different people. I think this is the the more and all of these are covered by, by a social social impact because there are a lot of interactions between the people, between the space, the context, uh, by themselves. So there are all points of interactions in the experience. I agree with you. You need to understand what your audience is and to know what the type of people are involved in your activity. Museums have a social dimension that involves part of the community in their activities and anything made in this context that improves their engagement could have a great effect on a whole group of people. Yes, I think if you if you implement a kind of a scenario where you put in uh, like uh, uh, some kind of coherence in all the goals you have to get. Um, I think th that is a thing that in a school uh, sometimes is different than in another in another context like a museum because you in museum you have very clear uh, you have a, a a very strong goal. It's like you know you don't have a lot of strong goals. So so you can put more values. You are more free, more creative to to spend uh, time in that scenario to, to promote different ideas and to, 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 to get that autonomy of the, of the people who are playing that experience. I think it's different, you know? I think you need to be more flexible but, and, and the learning is better. And, and, and when we are talking about this kind of uh, context like museum or, or, or other cultural contexts, I think you you are more free and and this flexible uh, skill of the student or the participant is uh, contribute to feel the experience difference and we, we in my case we wish uh, or teachers wish to 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 put that kind of flexible uh, design into a formal context. That's definitely true. Museum educators are more free in the way they do their work and the contents they work on the teachers, but the aim should be now to develop a stronger relationship between them to transfer what they know to formal education working in projects together. As gamification could be a way of doing it, could you tell us how teachers are working with non-formal educators to implement gamification studies? Yeah, well, I think uh, nowadays we 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 are all like an hybrid content, so we mix and, and it's more like uh, transdisciplinary. Uh, all the things, even uh, when we are in uh, when we are at school, we choose things or components or or tools that we can uh, increase our motivation uh, or a students' motivation in the classroom, and and we we take even teachers buy their own tools. To, to improve their, cla their, their, their class, no? the, the, the way they, they teach. So I, I think uh, what, what we, uh, social nets, I think they, they are spreading the, the voice of all of these things, gamification and other no, other no formal contexts or experiences into 
the, the formal context of the classroom. So I, we, we try to be creative to take what is better for our students and we, we tend to, to mix all that things. So teachers learn by themselves how to improve things, not because they learn uh, in a formal way about it, but we are trying. It's like a, a cause and effect. We, we do that, it, it works. So uh, it, it's what for me. So we continue with that and, we sp and they spread the, vo the voice. So other teachers are like some kind of infection here. <laughs> and, and it's good because you, you have to, to, to take that opportunities to improve your students' um, learning. So I, I think now we have a lot of things to, to learn out of school and, and it's, it's a good idea to, to try, but with some kind of, um, of planning. I, I think that the difference here is that when we are talking about a formal education, we have to plan very consciously about it because the, 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 it's a risk there. If, if you miss one session, uh, no matter. But if you miss a lot of time, uh, spending time trying to, to get something, maybe you have to change. So we have to plan very consciously. Well, we have talked about the relevance of gamification stages for promoting engagement, participation and motivation with any content, how to develop an effective gamify strategy. To end this talk, I would like to talk with you about how gamification can be applied in a practical way. So, could you tell the listeners which are your recommendations on the time of implementing gamification stages during the development process of detailed educational resources for young people? Well, first of all, take into consideration that gamification is a design process, so you have to know the concept deeply. I think people tend to, to do like a game and, and do without knowledge about it and and finally, you, you get a game, but not a gamification experience. So for this, the best way is to get prepared. And, and we can find a lot of courses now uh, to get it into, into the net. Uh, and, and even in the, there are a lot of educators that, that prepare about gamification. Um, secondly, I, I think you, you have to, to take into account that you, you don't, have to get love like at first sight with your idea because sometimes um, this is not the, the end product, the end experience. It's like in game design, you no, know? it, it's a bad idea to get love with that. And sometimes teachers uh, tend to, to love the idea because they love maybe the narrative by themselves, but it is not a good idea for the students. So we have to, to, to think about it. Uh, you have to readjust, normal, um, readjust and iterate the process uh, a lot of times to get something that works in your classroom and with your students and don't miss th that educational objective. Um, and sometimes people tend, people, teachers, or the, the person who are designing that gamification experience tend to forget this over a motivational and playful content. And I think there, there isn't an easy way for this, no? So you have to consider a lot of things uh, about your content and how game elements influence, influence as a layer to that content and what are the values that rules the experience. I think that values, that, that dynamics are very important, no? The, the way the, the players, the students are going to interact with your experience. It's like uh, the second part, no? There are like two, two two directions, the way you present the experience and the way the others play with your experience. So my recommendation is to learn about it. To, you need to personalize that experience to your audience and, and have a good uh, starting point uh, is to know more about games and their design process. And of course, play a lot to analyze what happened when you play. I think that are the keys. Thank you for giving the listener those recommendations. They are so useful to understand how they can implement gamification strategies. I think many secondary education teachers don't believe in gaming or gamify tools as a way to teach their contents, and it's because they need more training in new tools and pedagogical strategies. Yes, I, th I think all of us, we have to improve that because it's so difficult to get a perfect experience 
uh, with gamification. It's not it's not easy. Uh, so we, we tend to do the, the most easy way, no? points, bats, uh, kind of ranking, uh, rewards. Uh, but this is not the idea. The idea is the learning. So it's something intrinsic to, to, to promote curiosity, to promote uh, discover things. That's the idea. So I, I think all of us, we have to learn more about it. And of course, games and yeah, and I think video games like, uh, now, nowadays uh, are better to know the process we, we, we follow uh, from the starting point when we are uh, onboarding on the game and to the end, to the goal of the game. So we do a lot of things, we learn a lot of things and we, we develop skills uh, a lot of times because we train we 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 develop uh, some kind of resilience uh, with uh, we are proactive uh, i think um james, james polgi that is a, a a teacher of the university that uh, is, explained very good how video games uh, cast, uh, have have consequence in in learning playing like 13 principles about the how, how video games join to learning. So I think it's due the idea how the game elements can improve your learning. And, and well, I, I recommend it. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk with you and know more about how gamification can be a powerful way to engage young people with digital heritage educational resources. Thank you uh, for inviting me here and, and well, it's a pleasure. If you would like to learn how to engage young people with digital gamification, I recommend you a handbook published by the Y Game Project titled How to Succeed with Digital Gamification for Youth, published in 2018. The handbook is published in English, Latvian, Portuguese, Croatian, Estonian, Spanish, Hindi, and Vietnamese. To learn how to create meaningful experience to gamification in museums, I suggest you to read the paper titled Strategies for Meaningful Gamification Concepts Behind Transformative Play and Participatory Museums, written by Scott Nicholson in 2012. If you want to know European projects working on gamification studies for cultural heritage, I recommend you visit the Fusion Project website. It aims to develop new educational approaches based on non formal gamification methods, offering creative ways to support young people and local communities to promote child active participation and social inclusion in society related to the valorization of intercultural heritage. Another interesting project is the Gymkhana 5.0 Cultural Heritage for Young People project. It's aimed to expand European heritage education among young people, in particular young people with fewer opportunities, refugees and migrants, people with disabilities, people with social and economic obstacles, etc through the development, experimentation, and implementation of innovative educational tools based on the use of gamification. Thank you very much for being today with Clara Maria Cordero Balcázar and me in this podcast. Next week, a new expert will come and a new topic will be. Find all the resources from the topic we talk about in this podcast on the resource section of the Each Education blog. If you like this podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, share with your colleagues, Follow the podcast on Spotify, iBox, or any platform you listen to, and follow the parades on social media. See you next week!